Well, that was a race, that is for sure. Uh, the Mexican Grand Prix just really, really hits different. Really hits different. Uh, congratulations to Carlos Sainz. He was on top of it from qualifying all the way through to the end of the race. He really never saw too much push from anybody. Verstappen did send it down the first corner, but I mean, we, well, we'll get into that. Before we start though, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second, and let's break down this race. So first of all, Carlos Sainz, but like, let's go through the rest of the field. Funny, this felt like kind of an older, it is an old school track, but it felt very 2016. Uh, we only had eight people on the lead lap. Uh, now, some of that was because of people pitting for fastest laps and stuff like that. Uh, I think... Oh no, I guess not really, because Prez was already pretty far down. And then quite a few people out, and we saw a safety car. So, very old school, not what you normally see. Uh, so we see quite a few off, uh, really only the top, uh, the top two there. Now, Leclerc wasn't 34 seconds, he pitted. He was about three or four when he went into the pits, and I assume that he would probably be about six seconds behind had he not a pitted. He did get the fastest lap and we'll kind of look at that a little bit too. But first of all, let's take a look at the start. Um, we're gonna go in a little sections. There's a lot of video in this video, a lot of uh, highlights, but I don't want to get done from the FIA. So we'll take it in little sections here. So off the line, everybody was very good. Uh, most people did mention, and I mentioned in my qualifying video that third really is a very good place to start at. Uh, now, as we go down the front here though, there's a couple people to take a look at. The three in the front, as they come down, Norris sneaks to the right hand side which i think is the wrong way to go i would have taken the left and gone around the outside uh but in hindsight probably a good move because uh carlos ends up running very wide now try not to look at yuki just yet but as we go through this little bit you can see max is i mean i want to say he's ahead there we're gonna do a lot of stewarding here i would say that he's a bit ahead at the apex uh, but he does run Carlos off the road, and Carlos, to his uh, to his right, I mean, he, he did it, and he did give the place back. He only gave it back to Verstappen, though, which I thought McLaren would fight more on, but they didn't. And that was kind of the start. Now let's go back in through... Do I have a better angle? Yeah, here we go. Here's an actual part of the start here that I got. Uh, so as we come through here, take a look at Yuki. He's in the outside there. There's actually him. There's Albon. Uh, there's... A Connor Gasly, and then there's Magnussen on the inside. So four into this corner doesn't go. Three doesn't really go. Two kind of goes, but you can see how Max and Carlos got along there. Two kind of doesn't really go either. So four is never going to make it. Now, what ends up happening with this crash? And I got this angle specifically because watch the cameraman. Holy jumping! Now we saw this at Monaco, where the press and the camera guys and all that stuff got pepper sprayed with carbon fiber. And actually, one of the f photographers. Got hurt, not seriously, but he got uh, pretty banged up. And you watch this camera. Watch the accident, but also watch the camera. The camera has been abandoned. <laughs> there is no camera. You can see lots of other stuff going on, which is really interesting. And I thought that camera angle was pretty cool to show when he abandons the camera, because he's not on it anymore. Obviously, taking cover from not getting pepper sprayed with dirt and dust and, and carbon fiber bits. Uh, but the way the camera angles work these days is they really do fo follow the cars and specifically the car sponsors very, very closely. So it's, uh, it's one of those things where the, the camera angles from 30 years ago were much different than they are now. And to see the cars go by at speed without any sort of moving around or zooming in on, on, uh, sponsors, labels or anything like that, like the amount of zoom they do is ridiculous. It's actually kind of cool to see. And just to see the cars come by at kind of like a regular pace is, is really interesting to me. So I, I like that camera angle. That was pretty good for that. Uh, but let's take a look at the uh, at some of the other stuff that went on at the start. So first of all, we have Sergio Perez, who is outside of his pit box. They said false start, but if you're outside of your pit box, that's technically a false start. You are not in your pit box, so you, your, fall, your start has been false. And he got a five-second penalty for that. He said over the radio uh, that it wasn't a false start. It was a perfect start. Um, and then they told him they wasn't in his box and he said, no, you should check because I think I was in my box. Here is the line where his tire should be. You can see up here, you're in the box. They draw this big line so you know where to put your front tire in because it is very hard to see out of these cars. This man 
has started over 200 Grand Prix. Just keep that in mind. He's done this 200 times. Here's the tire, there's the line. It's not even in in focus of the camera. Like it's it's not even there. <laughs> it's hard to even see. I, I don't even be able to see, but he's way off the marks. So I get a five cent grid penalty for that. Now, let's go in and look at the Max V Norris. Another, 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 another incident. I will preface all of this by saying that Max is a hyper aggressive driver. He has been for a really long time. And before he was a champion, he was still a hyper aggressive driver. And we all thought he was, in his early years, he was compared to Kvyat, who is well known as being the dive bomber. He is the Russian bomber from way far back because he did dive bombs on people that he probably shouldn't have been. And he got kind of a reputation for doing that. And Max was actually kind of compared to him. There was a time at which Kvyat drove for Red Bull as well that he was kind of being held in comparison to that. He was a bit of a dirty driver. He's hyper aggressive, young, not really experienced. And you can see Max has aged tons over the years. He's matured, but that hyper aggressiveness, I don't think will ever go away. And this is him case in point. We'll take a look at that and I'll say my verdict at the end. But this is the first, he got noted for two times. Where is my book? So Max got noted two times, one for turn four and one for turn eight. This is the turn four one, we'll take a look at it. You can see Norris is quite clearly alongside, I would even say ahead at before and during the apex. We're not really gonna argue that, he was there. Max then kinda, his angle at the corner is too steep and the, these cars are really too big for this track. This isn't like Austin. Uh, the, this corner here is quite similar, uh, but the run up to it is a lot different. And what ends up happening is he runs him wide, off the track. Totally runs him off the track. And you can see where Leclerc is taking this corner normally. This is a normal, this is where you should be. If Max w didn't have Norris beside him, Max would be here following Leclerc through, and he's not. You can see he's two and a half car lengths out and at the maximum part of the track. This is very, very similar to what he did in Austin. Very, very similar to what tons of other drivers do. Max is not the only one that knows how to maximize these, these regulations and these drivers driving standards. They've been doing it for a really long time. And he runs them off the track. Yeah, okay, good. So that's a five second penalty, right? That's what it's been for the longest time that I can remember, but they have the option to give 10. The severity of it, the, I don't know if they take into account how many times they've done it before. Uh, I know Magnuson was definitely given that, uh, that treatment in the past. When he was in that midst of having all those penalties, they started to ramp up the penalties as he did it because he was kind of being known as kind of a dirty driver because he was defending so that his teammate could pull ahead or catch up. Okay, so that's a turn four incident. We'll get into the penalties in a second. He runs Norris wide by a lot. You can see he ran him so wide that he almost runs into Leclerc here. He's only like about a tire away and he has a really hard time making that corner. Now Norris doesn't give the place back because I don't really think he should. He was run off the track, so he's running as normal. And as he comes through here, so this is a turn eight incident. Uh, this is not a place that you pass. There wasn't very many passes here the whole race. I think maybe only one that I can think of, maybe two, um, but this isn't really a place that you pass. So Norris was a bit compromised because his tires all drove through the grass. Max dive bombs him, I think is the correct. There's no real apex here because it's not really a corner you pass at, but Norris was clearly ahead. Not at the apex, I would say, but Verstappen just didn't break at all, really. I mean, and then runs himself off the track as well as Norris. And he didn't even try to turn in. And he actually hit him a little bit. They both run wide and keep on going. So that's the two incidents. Now they gave him a 10 second penalty for turn four and a 10 second penalty for turn eight. Both of them are breaches of international sporting code. Both of them, they judge them to be a bit more harsh and he, he and that's basically what they say in here. And they say that Norris would have been able to make the maneuver at a track had not been forced off. So he gained a result back from science. 
Uh, Norris cut the corner, but immediately gave the position and he gained as a result. Back to science, the penalty is in standard such as kinds, blah, 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 blah. That's what they said. Before we get into seriousness, I want to bring this up. Outstanding penalty, which I thought was the funniest graphic that I've pretty much ever seen. This rivals some of the really funny radio memes. An outstanding penalty. You know what that means? Outstanding in what sort of way? Anyway, we'll go back to what these mean. Okay, they do have the option to give a 10 second penalty. I would have gave them a five for both of them. And what does that mean for the race? Well, if we go back to the actual results, Verstappen is 59 seconds off the lead. Norris is four seconds off the lead. I will make a huge note that when he served his 20 second penalty, it was actually a 24 second penalty because it's really, really hard to sit there and wait that long and get the, the stop the 2.3 seconds or whatever there's a certain amount of uh, there's a certain amount of gumption you have to do to get that right it has to be a nice flow a nice uh move in when they practice they don't practice to stand there and sit and wait and it kind of gets them off kilter if you see them throw the tires on they throw them on but if they're standing there waiting they're kind of not ready to do it and as a result of that it was actually a 24 second penalty because <laughs> it well i guess maybe 22 because it was uh, he was four seconds stopped when he normally he would have been two seconds stopped. So really kind of bad. The other thing bad for him, he had to sit there for 24 seconds. Uh, you could see the guy trying to blow air in his uh, top intercooler above the engine to try to keep it cool uh, because he has engine issues. He's had to replace one of the other engines with an old engine. We still think that he doesn't have the alloca allocations to make it to the end of the year. If you're looking at a 10 second penalty, at the very least, before the end of the year, probably at Brazil in the next race. So they're trying to blow air on that engine because he sat still for 24 seconds, which is a long time. And this isn't at a nice warm up lap or whatever before the start of the race where they sit there for sometimes 20 seconds. This is after he's been pushing for a really long time, coming into the pits when he doesn't necessarily, like he's been out there for a really long time pushing. The cars do not want to sit there without anybody touching them, with not air going over them for 24 seconds. And that's what ended up happening. And I'm sure it was not good for his allocations. Okay, so we're through that. Ultimately, I think this is a, another case of just the FIA not doing the right thing. All right, let's go back and talk about where he would have finished. He probably would have finished be ahead of Hamilton and Russell. It would have at least thrown... If he to put 10 seconds on there, yeah, he's still technically behind them in DRS range. He was really complaining about his tires. His lap representation really wasn't there. Uh, Russell and Hamilton were fighting each other for 14 or 15 laps. Almost, uh, what did I have? 14 laps ending at lap 66. So they've been doing that for a long time. They wouldn't have done that had Max been right behind or right ahead of them. There would have been some team orders. Russell's wing was damaged anyway, so I think maybe he might have finished in P6 anyway? Hard to say. Uh, it really was kind of a weird situation, but like I said, this is just another case of the FIA not being consistent. Did he do... Max has literally done this before, and literally got a penalty like this before, and it was only five seconds. We actually just saw in this race both Perez Lawson and Stroll, all at the same corner, all like one or two laps after this, do exactly the same thing and then not get any penalty. And not like a minor penalty, like five seconds, like bad, but not that bad. They completely left them all off the hook, which I don't really understand. I don't get it. So just more inconsistency there. I think they need to fix these driver standards or something. Something needs to be done because it just kind of looks like a farce every time. I'm here talking about this rather than the rest of the race, which was actually really, really good. So those are the two documents there. That's that. Let's take a look at the Lawson versus Perez because this is becoming quite spicy. Um, Lawson, if you don't know, is sort of thought to be in line to take Perez's seat next year. What will happen to Perez? Will he drop down to the lower team or be gone altogether? I suspect that he'll be gone altogether. I'm surprised they didn't do it at break. Like I said, they probably would have saved themselves a bunch of points, but here we are. Um, this is Perez trying to get back up by Lawson because Perez started so poorly. Lawson gives him no room, like just 
barely a car's width. And if you want to get down to it, I want to say that they're not really a car's width. The car's width is supposed to be to the white line, not to the edge of you just barely making that. They do take these corners quite harshly, but Perez is on the grass there. I don't know if that's really fair. And uh, it was a dive from Perez, for sure, but he was pushed out. And then Perez, who wasn't necessarily ahead, doesn't give him room, and he goes off track there. The incident was noted, no action for that, that there. That was very, very similar to what Max did. And then Lawson, because he got run off the track, gives him no quarter, comes back on the track, and ends up hitting Perez. And you see, that's a bunch of Perez stuff. The side pod here was damaged by the rear wheel. Uh, and that ruined Perez's race, actually. I suspect, now Perez is not the best driver in the world, but I suspect that he could have drove through the field and finished like 10th, 9th, at least catching up to the Haases at the end of the race. Uh, but because of that damage, he was totally compromised. He went for fastest lap at the end of the race with a soft tire, merely 10 seconds before, no, okay, we'll say 40 seconds before uh, Leclerc did. Leclerc did it 1.1 one, uh, 1 .1 seconds faster than Perez's. So that's the representative damage he had there. Now, the Ferrari's a little bit faster and Leclerc's a little bit better driver, but that's a big difference. So he actually had some damage there. Now, this doesn't end here. This is Lawson going past him later in the race. And he does this. This is very clearly, I mean, nobody's joking around here. Wow, gives him the finger and just drives on. So obviously no love lost there. And I don't think, I suspect that Lawson has already been told that he's getting this seat. I think he's already got it, to be honest. I think the decision has already been made. As soon as they kicked out Daniel Ricciardo, they're like, here's your practice when you take over the main driving in, uh, and as long as you don't make a total noob mistake or get yourself disqualified or something, you're going to be driving for us next year. Uh, and he knows that, and he's he just gave the main team that he drives for and is going to be, see who's going to be taking at the man's home Grand Prix at a country where I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I mean, uh, they made mention, Brundle made mention that he may better wear a balaclava when he leaves for the airport so nobody sees him because this is not the track that I would do that to Sergio Perez. Luckily, it's nowhere near anybody so they couldn't have seen it. It's not like he got out of the car and punched him or anything. So I think he probably will get away with it. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be at his hotel though. Extra, extra guards will need to be up for him. Okay, so this is the last little clip that I have and this is Leclerc's almighty save. I wasn't able to hit the the record button as fast as possible but here here's Leclerc this is uh where is this this is the last corner coming to the straight it is the last co corner coming to the straight Leclerc there were times here what are the times that I had so lap 59 is when Norris kind of caught up to, caught up to him and lap 58 he took 1.2 seconds out of him now there was some lap traffic in there but they both had stroll that they had to go by arguably Leclerc got him at the worst time, but 1.2 seconds a lap is a lot. And then as soon as he caught the DRS, you could tell that Norris was just faster. I think Charles was struggling with uh, tires and both the Ferraris were struggling with brake temps. Uh, they were doing lots of lifting and coasting. And when they did get to lap traffic, they were literally pulling straight out of the air, uh, much like Lewis Hamilton was early on in the race. Uh, so this is Leclerc saving it and going on to the, onto the runoff there. And as soon as that happened, he completely lost his pace. I think, I think Lando was going to go by anyway, uh, but that was an almighty save from Leclerc. Watch this tail slapper. On too much on the power. Whoa, whoa! Did you see how close he was to that edge there? Let's see if I can go back. See if I can catch that. Watch the right hand side here. How close is he to that wall? I think it's a lot closer than we think it is. It's not the first part. It's where because the wall comes back in a little bit. Oh no, that, oh no, it's that one there. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my God. That's so close. He's literally, cause there's a jut out there, right? You can see that jut out as he goes by. He is literally six inches from that wall. He almost ruined his race there. That was crazy. Okay, so let's go through some of the teams. P2, obviously, Lando did a great job. I think he was, if it wasn't for Carlos Sainz being an amazing driver, I think Lando would have got driver of the day there. He does vote very heavily, but uh, I think that was a great race from him. Uh, I was to beat out a Ferrari uh, at this point of the year when Ferrari genuinely are the faster cars. 
Uh, I think that was great from him. Uh, Charles, nothing really bad to say about him. He was just on the back foot a little bit throughout the whole weekend, uh, which is odd because usually he's the stronger race day driver, uh, especially even against other drivers. Mercedes, very odd, terrible kind of weekend. George had an old package. And as a result of that, you would have thought that Lewis would have been a lot faster, in, in, as well as the fact that George's front left wing uh, straight right at the top of the element of the wing was broken. It was actually had snapped off. And uh, so he was compromised through most of the race. And Lewis did get by him, but they fought for 14 laps from 51, 52, all the way to lap 66 when Lewis went by. Um, and I was really surprised because their tires were fairly similar age and Lewis has the newer package. Or George was running the Silverstone package. Like, very, very old. And it seemed to be better, to be honest. So they've not really made much improvements uh, over the past while, at least on this type of circuit. They seem to be kind of, struggling is the wrong word, they just seem to be kind of stagnant. Now, they're probably improving, but everybody's improving, so it just kind of seems like they're stagnant. But they don't seem to be making those big leaps and bounds like we've seen from Ferrari and some of the big upgrades that have come. So, kind of odd, just kind of a, a weird result. They didn't really seem, again, they were a minute off the pace as well as uh, Max, so. RB, uh, Red Bull, 6 and 17. Checo, Checo nowhere. Poor qualifying. Not really good in practice. Absolutely abysmal start. Fighting with technically a sister team. Damaging his car. Not being able to do fastest lap. Got nothing out of Prez this weekend. I think that was probably one of his worst results at his home Grand Prix. And he got a penalty. So I don't, I don't know. It's very weird. Max, I think he was treated a bit unfairly. A lot of people say British bias. Don't assign malice where stupidity can be assigned. Because uh, I think the FIA are a bunch of idiots. I don't think they're out to get Max. I think they're just really stupid. <laughs> There's That's just that. I think they're just idiots. And that's how that sussed out there. Haas, I think Haas would probably... It looked as though, in the first end on the mediums, they were as fast as Mercedes. They were not being dropped. Um, Magnussen was only about two seconds behind after they finished their full first stint. So uh, really good on the mediums. And then at the end there, Piastri got Hulkenberg, but he could not get Magnussen. Um, they were lapping very similar and Piastri had much, much, much newer tires. I will say he did an amazing first stint. I don't know how long that was. Crazy long stint from Piastri. I didn't write down how many laps. It was in the 30s though, which is a long time. This is a high dig track and he was making moves too. He wasn't just kind of sitting there uh, holding the station, starting off in P6. He worked his way to P6. He worked for that. Yeah, so pretty good. What else do we got? Um, and then 16th and DNF. We saw Lawson. Who did he crash with? Oh, Colapinto. Who? Colapinto got a 10 second penalty for crashing into Lawson. It was the same kind of thing. And this is the kind of thing that maybe the FIA gave them a 10 second penalty because he was, uh, it was the same corner. I think it was corner four and they actually ran into each other. It might have been corner one though, I'm not sure. Uh, and he ran into Lawson. Didn't really give him enough room. It was a pretty hard whack too. And Lawson's car was damaged. Now the FIA say that the result, if, if he had have hit Lawson and then Lawson ran into the wall and died, the, the result should be exactly the same as that if Lawson hadn't had any damage at all and continued on and won the race. The result of the action isn't what gets penalized. So winning, if Lawson won or if Lawson had have died tragically, the, the penalty should not be any different. So saith the rules. Uh, unless you're so egregious that you're... I've seen some stuff by Michael Schumacher that he should have been disqualified for life. Like when he ran Barrichello or Massa. One of them. Uh, right up to the wall at... I was going to say it's Valencia, but I can't really remember. Um, oh, it might have been Brazil. No, I don't remember. Uh, that, he should have been banned for life when he did that. But, uh, like... My point is that the the result of the of whatever happened is not what gets penalized. It's the action. So uh, what they were doing there, in my opinion, was trying to save face. Gave him a 10 second penalty, just like they did Max, trying to be as consistent during this race as much as possible. Uh, and Yuki, just a pretty poor move. It was we didn't get to see. I didn't get the actual part, but it was a squeeze. It was four into one. Doesn't go. 
and Albon kind of got squeezed over by one of the Alpines, but Yuki also tried to outbreak them, and that's what ended up hitting. And Albon went into the wall, and bro he broke his front left. And Yuki actually, when he outbraked him, he slid by him and hit his rear wheel on, uh, rear, rear wheel on him. Uh, so in my opinion, I think that accident was actually Yuki. So that's pretty much the race. What does that mean for the championship? It means that that really kind of two DNF lead that Max had over Norris is now not there anymore. Also, Red Bull falls to third in the Constructors Championship. And with the way that they're finishing, I don't think they're going to catch back up. Not with only one driver in the championship. Max can be amazing at times, but he can only get 25 points. 26 of these doing really, really well. So I don't, I don't think they're going to catch back up. And from what we can see, it's really going to take a lot from McLaren to not lose out the Constructors' Championship to Ferrari. Where is it kind of come to a head? I would suspect the third to last race of the year, unless something insane happens, you're going to see that's where Ferrari catch McLaren. I think that's what's going to happen. Not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. So overall, I would give that race really high rating. That was four to five stars at the very least. Uh, there was some boring bits at the middle to the end there, just before uh, Norris caught uh, Leclerc. But we saw some really good racing from Piastri throughout the race, and Hamilton v. Russell was really awesome. It's great to see that come about, because normally that would have been team orders in years past. And good to see those two fighting it out, and cleanly, too. They, they, they did their job. Uh, excellent race. Again, great for uh, Carlos Sainz. I think I still believe that it's kind of sad that he's moving to Williams. Now, Williams is a good team. I'm all for Williams. I was a big fan in the 90s when they were really well uh, run. And even uh, when uh, his daughter took over in the early teens, it was a fun team to watch, especially when Botas was there. It, w it was uh, good, the Martini days. But these days... They're kind of like their surprising days being in P6 or P8 is kind of really all you see. I think Carlos is a better driver than that, to be perfectly honest. But, I mean, that's the way the ship flies as you get a little bit older. Sometimes you are usurped, especially if you're not considered to be one of the best drivers out there. So, And there's, it is a tight field. It is a very tight field, especially with a, a new up-and-coming guys that are pretty good. Like, although Lawson didn't finish very well today, he's an excellent driver. So is Colapinto, so is Kimi Antonelli, so are some of the other guys that are coming up. It's a tight field, so uh, he is what he is, but he is a excellent driver, I would say. Aside from that, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second, and I will see you next time.